My name's Owen Livesey and this is my seminar. Y'all see me fly and never drop down, drop down, smoking high am I am not round, I'm not round, no denying what I got now, I got now, keep an eye out, keep it locked down, locked down, see me fly and never drop down, drop down, smoking high am I am not round, I'm not round, no denying what I got now, I got now, keep an eye out, keep it locked down, locked down. I'll talk for like five minutes, go through what we're doing, and then once we start, it'll be a pretty fast paced session. So it's like judo for grappling, but you'd be surprised, like, there's not that much judo in it. Yeah, it's like really judo for jiu jitsu is better because you have a gi on. Yeah, but in no gi, it's like if you were to do actual traditional judo in no gi, it won't work. Yeah, because half of the judo throws require you showing your back. And in nogi, obviously you haven't got that gi to grab. There's a lot higher risk when you're showing your back in nogi than there is in gi. So we'll, what, what we're going to do today is basically like I'm going to show you an outline of like a game I like to play. It's a really simple game where on feet and trying to get to a body lock. I've got a load of takedowns from body lock, which we'll, sh we'll show you quite a few today. That is when you get behind your partner. That is when your partner has a wizard. That's when your partner has a wizard and you're controlling the inside. It's when your partner has a wizard and they're controlling the inside. So basically, if you get to a body lock after today, you should have at least one or two options in every single position that you could be in to take someone down. Yeah. And then obviously, because you're doing it for grappling or MMA, we want to link it to the floor as well. So there'll be a lot of groundwork transitions, so you get some sequences out of it, which you can take away and just drill in your own time. Um, I try and keep it as simple as possible because if, I'm, if you say you're fighting MMA or say you're fighting grappling and you're fighting someone in a points tournament, yeah? if I pass guard, I'll get points if I get to side, I'll get points if I get to mount. But if I pass guard and you get to turtle, I don't get any points. So the higher the level, the more people you'll find that when you pass, they go to turtle so you don't get points. Or if you're in MMA and you're on top of someone, they want to stand up. So when they're trying to stand up at some point in that exchange, they're going to end up getting to turtle and showing the back. Yeah, so a lot of my stuff comes from attacking turtle. And my aim is to get to a body lock and take you down. Once I've took you down, I'm trying to get behind you to take you back. And then I promise you, if you get good at fighting with a body lock and taking people down, and when you've got them to the floor, your aim is to get behind. I promise you, when someone's defending their back, you'll be surprised how many times you just land inside control and mount because they're that obsessed with stopping you getting behind them that they end up just giving you side and mount. Yeah, so it'll be clearer by the end of today. So to start with, we're gonna warm up using, with some hand fighting drills. So, who am I using, Reese? Uh, I think he's kind of, he's kind of. Yeah, so there won't actually be any massive throws today. So in terms of a hand fight, this is probably the most judo bit out of it all. So like, if I was wearing a gi, I'm looking to like control grips. Yeah, so I'm fighting someone who's the same side. If I'm right-handed and he's right-handed, I don't want to let him get that hand on if I have a gi. Yeah. If he gets that hand on, he can throw me. If I take his hand off, he can't throw. If he was on this side, so it was left against right, I'd be looking to control the inside. So the principles are exactly the same. If we're locked in this collar tie position here, I need to control this or get rid of it. Yeah. So I'll control it by getting to the inside. Now I'm controlling the inside space. Yeah? If I can't get to the inside space, I'm going to get rid of it. So to start with, you're going to start in a 50-50 collar tie like this. You've both got the same position. Your hand's on the outside. Now the foot on the same side as this hand on your bicep is going to step forward. I step forward and as I do that, this hand's going to come off the bicep. It's just going to be like floppy underneath his tricep. And I just come here. Now what I'm not doing now is a duck under, so I'm not going like this and travelling forward. I want to like throw him towards this lock. I just want to get to a body lock. So step in, 
I hit under his tricep and at the same time all one movement I'm going to turn to face the wall throw him past and now this hand stays on his neck so I'll put all his weight on his toes which allows him to tight waist shift him in I want to control his hips this bit's up to you if you like a body lock on this side take a body lock on this side I'm right handed so I like being on the other side so I just pull on the tight waist travel to the other side and I'll just find the body lock ok so we start here we're on the outside bicep tight I just step in, the hand comes under, I face the same way as my partner and literally slide it off my head, pull him forward with his hand on the back of the neck, tight waist, get to whichever side you want to do, go in, throw it back, get to your body up, yeah, it's nice and relaxed with that, three for three, couple of minutes, and then move on to the next one. Body, kids, it's a fucking jungle out there. Keep your head on tight. I know brain and mind me, baby. Let's do it. Y'all see me flying, never drop down, drop down, smoking high. Am I am not round? I'm not round, no denying what I got now. I got now, keep an eye out, keep it locked down, locked down. See me flying, never drop down, drop down, smoking high. Am I am not round? I'm not round, no denying what I got now. I got now, keep Okay, two more like this, and we're tired into a few takedowns. This time it's a basic snap down. So, for me, like when you're in this hand fight, you've got to have at least one option attacking this side, at least one option attacking the head, and at least one option attacking, attacking this side. So then you can chain them all together. Yeah, as well, I'd always have attacking the lower body, and we double and singles as well. So then you've got four, four options all in different directions. So that's when you can start tying things together. So it gives you one reaction on this side, you can attack this side, you pull his head down, he postures up, you can attack this. You shoot for legs and scrolls, you attack his neck. Yeah? So from here this time, I'm going to get to the inside bicep again. Back step, clear my neck. Now from here it's just a change of pace. So I literally just go, weight in my lead leg, push, pull. And when I pull, like I'm almost like, when I push I'm almost releasing. And then when I pull, I'm just snapping his head straight underneath my arm, you can see it. So I just push, pull, and I get this leg back at the same time. So what I don't want to do is snap him down into grabbing my single leg. Here, it's not, not what I want to do, yeah? So when I snap him down, I go one, snap, and get this leg back. It's like a front headlock, you've got to pin him in that position. If I snap his head underneath my right arm, my right shoulder needs to go on that bone on the back of his neck. So I need to get my legs back so I can feel all my body weight through my shoulder. Then I'll grab this tricep and I'll pull that out of line and then I'll run away from that tricep to bring him to the floor. See how it folds him? Yeah. So all your weight should be through that shoulder. So now going through your three options already. We've gone outside tie, gone in, slide by. Second one. Can't slide him by, so come inside, break it, and drag, body lock. <coughs> Third one, come inside, push, pull, snap, get my feet right back, chin trap, all my weight in that shoulder on the back of his neck, pull this elbow out of line and run away from it. Get him down to the mat. Yeah, let's have a go. A few minutes. Keep it locked down, locked down. You're too strong when I battle with the beast. Bring a few on. The commander and the chief for my crew on. Bullets rattling and whistle at your tooth. Never sleep by open hands clutching on my throat. This a war zone. This a war zone. Yo, this a motherfucking war zone. So, just a tiny point of a front head lock, and then you have a front head lock. So if it snaps him down, or if it's been a groundwork transition, or whatever reason you end up in a front head lock, don't put your knees on the floor. Yeah, as soon as my knees are on the floor, I'm literally about 50% of every now. 
Yeah, so as soon as I make him feel a little bit comfortable, because I put my knees down, then he starts focusing on, right, I feel all right, and I'll start fighting the hands, and I'll start fighting off. Yeah, so I want him to be like feeling the pressure all the time. If I'm making him uncomfortable and I'm here, the last thing he's thinking about right now is to fight the hands. <laughs> and when, he, when he starts panicking, he's in a bad position, I start moving to a different position. And I can attack, but as soon as you put your knees on the floor, you're much lighter. And on top of that, you can't move. Yeah, like, it's obvious that you could run faster on your feet than what you could on your knees. So in that position, as soon as I'm on my knees, I'm like, we'd say, like, you're dead. Like, you can't move when you're on your knees. Just bear in mind, wherever you get a front headlock, try and keep them knees off the floor so now I'm agile, I can move, I can go out of the way, I can start switching position. Yeah. So, last time fight the other. So remember we said me, one, two, three. So this time I'm going to tap that side. So I'm going to get me inside bicep, and I'm going to lift my elbow. Because when I get the inside bicep, it puts my elbow inside his forearm. Yeah, I've not done anything to get that though. I've just gone to the inside side. So I've just gone one, elbows inside his forearm. Which means, every time I lift this, I lift his arm. So, I can guarantee if you, you've, you're rolling or you're sparring, whatever, and you're in this position, you lift this, I guarantee they'll react by pulling it down. <coughs> yeah, yeah. And when they do that, for that half a second that he pulls it down, He's super heavy on this side, yeah. which means he's super light on that side, yeah? So when I lift this elbow, I'm gonna step, do a tiny step with my left leg at the same time. So I'm doing this sort of movement, yeah? So then when he pulls that down, this hand comes off the collar tie, I put my thumb to the floor, I'm gonna do a big outside step, and I get to the body lock on this side, yeah? So you just use these reactions. The better the people are, they're gonna be so strong here, that you're not going to be able to get behind them unless you set traps. Yeah, so this is one of your traps. So you're going inside visor, step and lift. And you get that every time. It might not be as big, but you'll always get that tension on that side. So you'll go one, and then from here, this thumb's going to come off. It goes down to the floor, and my elbow's up to the ceiling. And I do a big outside step with my right hand. It's like I'm throwing a cricket ball, and just throwing it straight over. I'm not grabbing anything. And then I come back to my body lock. Yeah. Inside, step and lift, throw. Now, last point on the body lock is when you lock your hands, you want your hands on one side of your partner and your knees on the opposite. Yeah. If I'm like this, he looks down, he sees my hands. That means he can fight him and hip out. I go here, he looks to his right, he sees my hands. When he tries to fight him, try and fight me on, look how twisted he is. That's when I can start attacking this side and tacking into the floor. Yeah, I want him to twist. You're just going to go inside, step and lift, throw, body lock. Hands on one side, body on the opposite. Three of them four are getting us into a position where you're behind your partner with a body lock and they don't have a wizard. Yeah, so we'll start from there, we'll pick three takedowns from there, we'll link it to the ground, we'll do a little bit of attacking total from there as well, and then we'll move into how you get into your partner having a wizard and what you do from there. So, the only one that didn't get you to that position is the snap down. Yeah, that, you're in front of one. So pick one of the other three. So you can pick your favourite one out of them three. Yeah, so just to remind you, you have the slide light here, you have the wrist control to arm drag here, and you have your switch inside, one, two, all three of them go to this position, yeah, so you choose one, whichever one you choose, you're just going to go behind, get to your body lock here, hands on one side, body on the other, it's super simple to start, they're definitely going to try and fight your hands. Yeah, I can guarantee that you get someone here to try and fight your hands. There's literally no other option for them. If they don't react, you can throw them wherever you want from here. So as he turns to your hands, 
I'm going to come to this side of him. And all I'm doing now is lifting his bum to the ceiling. But I'm not doing like a massive energy consuming pickup. I'm just tilting his bum to the ceiling so I get him on his toes. I'm whipping him down to his front which forces him to put his hands down. Just go here. So like my movement is up, straight back down. I'm not doing like a massive suplex. Yeah. If I end up here, I'll just get to the side. Put him in turtle. We forced him to come to turtle. This is going to tie in really well later to the work we're going to do from attacking turtle. Okay. I might go arm drag this time. Here. Get to the body lock. My hands are on one side. I'm attacking the leg on the opposite side of my hands. So I'm going to do one jump to get one leg either side of this leg. So I come here. I'm like pinching it. And then I'm going to lift his bum to the ceiling. Whip him on his front, which forces him to put his hands down. Yeah, let's have a go with that. Three for three. Start linking it together now. Yeah, feel the impact. Yeah, break it open, leave nothing fing intact. Hey, yo, you've been hacked. It's safe, hard in, but I found it, homie, been cracked. If you are fighting someone who's like massive, or you're exhausted, or later on in the session you're tired, and you don't feel like you can pick them up, but you don't always have to pick them up from here either. Yeah, like if I'm here and I'm like, I really want to conserve a bit of energy because I'm feeling the pace a bit, I don't have to pick him up from here. Yeah, like if I get a body lock, I genuinely really take my time from here, and just enjoy making him carry me around. Yeah, because. I can guarantee he's more uncomfortable with me behind him than I am behind him locking my hands. Yeah, so I'm not in a rush here whatsoever. Now if I want to take him to the floor without picking him up, all I do now is like the leg next to his, I like hit his knee out of line and like drag him diagonally. So what I'm literally just going from here just to get that. It's all I need. Yeah, so if you ever get in this position and you don't feel like you can just go up on and get a quick snap. Just make him feel good. He's got his head in his back. I literally just hit this knee. I just hit it and drag. That's it. I just need him to put his hands down. And I'm just going to work from here now. So as soon as he lands, this is why it's massive that you stay on your feet. Yeah. If I was on my knees now, I'd be fucked. Yeah. I pull him down on my knees. He's probably going to do like a canby roll. And he'll end up in back in guard or even worse behind me. Stay on my feet, I can move. If he starts to roll away himself, I can just dive on his back. So for me and now, so I've got my body lock, I've not disconnected my hands. I'm going to step away and pull him to me just to get that. That's perfect. So now I'll briefly put my back knee to the floor so I can step over that one leg. So now I'm in a really good position. Yeah. So now I've almost put him where he's going to make a decision. So for the first one, he's going to stay where he is. After this, we'll pretend that he shoots this way. He wants to get back to his feet, he starts to fight the turtle, okay? So if someone stays like this with me, my favourite thing to do is bring this hand to the trap and lock my hands. And then I'll have this elbow as wide as possible and I'll pull him back to his side here. Now, when I get, get into his side, I want to make him flat. So I'm going to briefly put my right knee to the floor. So I'll get my shoulder in front of his chest. And now I'm making flat here. Now from there, I just use one hand here, which is probably different to an arm triangle you've seen. I put my right hand on the floor flat. And I bring my knee over and I get to side. But when I get to side now, I put my right knee in his hip and I scroll my back hip to the floor. Now I'm going to finish an arm triangle here without squeezing my bicep whatsoever. Because there's nothing worse than when you get to an arm triangle, you're squeezing your bicep and your arms blow out and he's not tapped. So keep your palm flat. His neck's got to be touching the crease of your bicep. And then I'm just going to turn my head and try and touch my chest and my wrist so I've not even done anything there. Yeah, just lean. No, no squeeze. 
Now when he answers the phone, which some people do, she goes like this. Yeah, so if I was squeezing now, this would make it really hard to finish. This makes it tighter with this one. So push off my left arm, and just look over his forearm. No squeeze. Yeah. So you want to be able to finish an arm triangle without smashing your arms up and going on. So, I get to the same body lock, whichever position, whichever entry, here. Pick up, here. I drag him as soon as he lands. Drop that back knee and step. I come to the trap and I change the position. And I drive into the mat. I cut through. I put my hand flat. I put my right knee to his hip, sprawl me back here. I turn my head to look at him. He answers the phone. I turn my head to look at him. <coughs> Pretty tight. Yeah. Yo, this a war zone, homie. Say you ready and prepared. Take a minute, and make them aware. Well, I'll be sneaking in the back, but it's what the clap on me. Life ain't fair. Caught me crawling through the mud where the vision saw it clearly. Born a shepherd to these sheep, make them fear me. This a war zone, trashed out, trap house, nothing ever given. Yeah, every day's a blessing. Thank the Lord, oh, how I'm living. See me riding with my top down. No cops round, pedal pressing on the gas. I don't think I'll ever stop. So, next bit, and this time I'll get in the same position, and I've got behind him whichever one I want to use, you can go one, here, I might chop him this time, drag him, when I'm dragging him, I'm dragging him backwards, yeah, so my chest's on his hips, I'm not going to the side here, yeah, he's pretty strong there, it's all about controlling his hips, like if he wants to get up, and I'm all over his hips, he can't get up, yeah, as soon as I take my weight off his hips and I put it over here, now he's strong here. But when I'm here all the time, you try and stand up with it. Every time I'm controlling that, I'm not even doing anything. Yeah, I'm literally just using my body weight on the back of his hips. <laughs> so I'm just here. So now I'm going to step back and control this top hip flexor here. Pull that top hip flexor to you. Because that's the leg that I want. I'm going to go one, two. Now let's say this time he panics and he goes to turtle. Go to elbows and knees that way. That's it, get right up. We're going to go to this position. See how I can break behind his leg. As we go back here, man. So the key with this is now, is that I need to switch my grip. So when I'm here, I've got control. I've got the option for this arm triangle. As soon as I feel him powering up to go this way, as soon as I feel him start to move that way, this arm comes to this side, so I let him carry me up, so my body stays straight, and I've just got that grapevine there. Now from here I want to take his back, so I've got this grapevine, this other hand is just going to grab the front of his shin. Yeah, so grab his shin, and I just put this hand on the floor and a base on this hand. So I just pull this knee straight out of line up to the ceiling, so I'll go here. Now walk that triangle up. I'm in a good position. Yeah, obviously there's loads of shit from here. The split, car slices, twisters, arm bars. We're just gonna base, keep it basic and go for a back take first. So from here now, as soon as I start to extend my legs, it's gonna turn that way. So what I need to do is this far arm needs to hug this armpit. As soon as I make the decision, I wanna get his back. So I extend my legs and I go here. Now I've got his back. Yeah, now I can put this foot on the floor, adjust, get the back, and now I'm here. Now when you finish, just your finish position, your overhook hand is going to be your strangle hand. Yeah, you're not going to strangle him with your underhook. So make sure you're hiding that. If I go here, and now he grabs the top hand, and fuck now, I can't strangle him. Yeah, he's controlling it. So I need to be hiding this, so I put my thumb in his chest, I grab my own wrist, so now when he fights the hands, what he ain't grabbing is the wrist I'm going to choke him with. So now it gives me half a second to clear his hand with my underhook, and just get that. So now obviously he's going to fight them arms. Of course he's going to fight them. So I just bring this out, beat the top hand, and just finish with a short choke. Okay. 
You've done any takedown, if you use your elbows and knees, mate. Any takedown you want, you get to this same position. A step back, a drag him into the space. Put your knee down for a second and step over. Now this, this bit is the key, you'll fall over if you get this wrong. As soon as he goes that way, this elbow comes to this armpit. So my body's never twisted. We go like this. See how my body now is just in a straight line. Nothing's twisted, so I'm really comfortable. And I've got the great line there. So now I'll just grab this hook, this shin, base on the floor. As soon as I lift, this right leg's going behind my left knee. So I've locked that, that's my triangle, so I've got some good control now. Now from there, I'm gonna extend my legs. Fire arm under up to the shoulder. I can put this foot on the floor. Get my hips back. Hers is black. Hide your strangle hand. Clear, open. If he starts fighting the hands, oh, short shot. Yeah, let's just add that to it. Someone at the door, John, now I'm here to stay Tell me who the fuck gonna face the music More brick laying that screen time Been cutting back on the daily usage Long road for the road dogs For the wind miles from the soapbox Got BKTs on this bitch So everybody get a rolled on, yeah Yeah, everybody get a rolled on Check artist credits on BMI I'm just too kind to expose y'all And I see a team with a gold sign And question if y'all ever wrote songs All enemies of mine are band study Please don't test me, I'ma know it all Got platinum songs in the vault collecting dust If we talk about showing up Then y'all attendance suck Both feet on the gas pedal Bitch, I ain't letting up Started singing they Last one from this position So we're getting back down to total Let's go for the turtle Let's say I'm here, before I take this step and drag, he manages to stand back up. So he's scrambling hard, he gets back to his feet here. So, this time I'm just going to circle like and try to get in front of him. You see how my lead leg gets in front of him now. So I'll go from here to here. Now I'll draw and switch it to a double leg instead. Okay, so this is where you can start building sequences. So I could go here. I could go slide by, I could get to a body lock, I could shot and drag him to the mat, he stands back up. So I could just circle him, run, switch, run, pass them legs, get to side control. If he doesn't stand, you drag, get your hook, arm triangle, or you get the back from that truck position. So I can go here, inside bicep, arm drag, chop, drag, he stands back up. A circle like you're trying to get in front of him. The arm at the back, the arms go across, just drop here. Now I just run and lift this leg and I block that knee. Pass the legs. Straight into side control. Yeah? Stab that onto it. Let's go. Fell in love, came a long way from being talentless Beat anything, I was challenged in Pressure turned me into a precious cut Flood lights to the flooded chain Every city tour in a ton of states I can't wait till I up the leaves So, this time go to your snap down Okay, so we're gonna go inside bicep Push and pull, get your snap Remember all my weight's back My knees never touch the floor I pull the elbow out of line and run away from the elbow Yeah, so he comes down to turtle He's in this position now from here I'm going to get my knee to the outside of his tricer So I'm here, front head lock, I get my knee to the outside of his tricer Which means I can now pass that way Yeah, he's not going to be able to grab my leg when I'm on the outside So I'll pass And as soon as I pass, I always get to a leg pin And I control his hip on the other side Yeah, as we've said all the way through from the beginning You don't have to be athletic or fast or anything for this stuff It's just slow yeah, it's all slow. It's like old man jujitsu a little bit. Yeah, it's just slow, but you do the right, you do the right things at the right time, which just stops them from doing anything. Yeah, and you're saving energy all the time. So I've got a leg pin now, so I'm controlling his leg on this side. This other arm comes across his lower back, and I grab the inside of his thigh like this, and then I like extend my tricep so he can just feel that weight on his hips. Okay. 
Now, first entry to get to the back from here, I just bring this arm and I bring it straight underneath his arm on the near side and go across the back of his neck like an half Nelson. Yeah? So I'm up nice and comfortable again. I come through, cut the back of the neck and I crank it like an half Nelson. So now I'll just get that. That's all I need to start is that. <coughs> now once I get that, I want to get back to my grapevine like you've done previous. So I'm going to let go of his neck once I get that and bring that elbow to that side. So I'm not twisting my body. And I'll get that comfortable. Yeah? Drag. Look. Now Reese said you've got a 10th planet lad coming next month. Ask them about this and they'll have about fucking 300 things you can get from here. And it's just a truck. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the, this is the shit. So, that's why I'm not going to go into depth on this, because he probably knows more shit from here than I, than I do, so you've got someone better for that. But from here now, I'm just going to go to the back. I extend, catch, readjust, set the back. Yeah. Just a couple of options to get there. So you've got your snap down, here. I've got into turtle, I get my knee to the outside of his tricep, I get to a leg pin, and I'm here. I'm sure if all you lads are doing MMA as well, this is perfect for your striking, yeah? I can just strike from here, and I can come through, lock, and crank that like an half nail, so just to get that. Once I get that, release it and get your elbow to the other side, so nothing twisted, everything's comfortable. Grab, lock, here. Be wary here that if your knees are high, if he rolls back, you can set my back. So, a little trick that I like to do when I'm in this position, I cross my feet like this because what some people can do is with that foot, they can boot my knee. Give me your foot, man. They boot this knee. So, they kick that knee and it breaks the grip. Yeah? So, you end up losing it. So, if I feel him, he's trying to kick this. I just go like this. So now like I hip thrust like I'm groin stretching, like a normal groin stretch. I hip thrust to the ceiling. So now I boot my knee, mate, try and get out. I'm going kick it. Yeah, it's like, it's already open. So I'm already doing what he's trying to do. Now obviously you've got all your twisters and stuff from here as well. Now when you're ready, you can just go one, here, shoot back, take that back. Yeah, so now just go from your hand fight, drag him to the floor where you snap down, get behind and use the half Nelson to enter. From the minus in my arm come a vein, seen a lot of people playing seeds to the dream, growing patient and run away, I cultivated, irrigated it, now the growth amazed and I love to change, oh yeah. Been laughed at before, been little bro, now the same one, same pass me the torch. Last bit of this, we've got about 45 minutes or so left, so the last bit, which, which Go with your partner having a whizzer and we'll connect that to the floor as well. Yeah, it's all going to connect to the floor, no matter what sport you're doing. So, I think it's a really easy position to get a body lock if you let them have a whizzer. Because they feel comfortable as well. They feel like they can throw me from there as well. It's not a hard position to get in, to get a body lock with a whizzer. The common way I end up getting this is by doing that hand fight drill we did before. Inside. I go one, two, when I get here he gets a wizard. He kills my momentum. I end up here. So now I get first, I'm going to attack with inside position. Second, we'll do when he has inside position. So you do both now. Yeah. So first I get my leg inside. This is what I want mostly. Yeah. And I'm guessing if you lads are doing MMA and you've got someone on the cage in this position, you'd have your leg in the middle as well. Yeah. So I'm in this position, I've got good head position. So this now, focus on my head, because with all these next drills, and the majority of your stand up, your head's massive. Yeah, it's, it's a massive part of it. It controls his head without me using my arms, and it controls my distance. So I'm going to put my head underneath his chin, and I keep that escalate. Now this is the simplest takedown in the world. So I'm literally just going to pop my hip into him. I'm controlling his hips, so I've got a lot of power here. I just pop my hip into him, and I drive him over that shoulder. So I just go here. This is how it works. I land on his hip here. So we like hip ride. Yeah, so I'm not getting stuck in half guard at all from this position. I'm hip riding. So my right hip is literally sat on top of his hip. Yeah, so if he tries to get a knee shield, tries to bring his knee in, it's just not happening. Yeah. Now when I disconnect a body lock, <laughs> I love a body lock because every time he takes someone down, when I disconnect my hands, 
my right hand can turn over and take a tight waist grip. So see how my right hand now is cupping his bottom hip. Yeah, so now I want to bring this arm for a cross face. I'll come to my knees and I'll bring my knee to his hip. You see how my right arm's across his lower back? So you try and hip escape now, mate. I'm not doing anything. Yeah, and that's the key because if I don't have that, you do all that work, you get to side control, you get to knee back inside and you're having to fucking fight that again. Yeah, so that tight waist, I try and get that whenever I can and side control. So I could even get this literally from here, I just go pop and I let him have that wizard and I bring my leg in the middle here. And I'll pop my hip into him and I drive him over his far shoulder. And I keep my hips in front all the time here. Now from here I'll disconnect my hands and I'll turn my hand over. So I'm like cupping that bottom hip. So what that does, it takes his lower back off the floor. I've got my head in front of his chest all the time. And another thing, side control or half guard, never go like this with your head. Now what's stopping him getting a Kimura on me? Nothing, yeah? I go like this, he tries to get a Kimura now. He can't, it's just tiny things, yeah? So I'll get a cross face with this arm, I'll bring my knee into his hip. See how my left arm's taking his head out of line as well. So it's an horrendous position for him, yeah, it's just uncomfortable. Now ask your partner to try and hip escape. Like you can't move, yeah, you're not, you're not using any energy. Just I ain't passing y'all shit. Border skate, California license plate. When I'm passing y'all in, take that to the chin. Lay back, let's come to a damn damn. Shit can get spicy. Ain't shit sweet, cause the light skin. I don't take shit lightly. Carpet tan, this shit like me. But can't entertain the psyche. No time for a bay. I'm too busy getting hyphy. Two full time jobs. When the fuck does he rest? Never when you want tan. Teed up like kind of lists on my friends. I'm in the shit to the end. I'm getting more with the drive. The film more's on my mind, yeah. I'm still sore from the heavy lifting that I've had to do, but it's fine. How many legs I got up on a shit resembling a whole centipede? Where this submission that I like to get from there is a compression choke. So let's say we go through that sequence. We're taking down from here. We go one, pop. Drag him to the floor, it doesn't have to be a smooth take now. Good head position, you control his hips, just drag it. Yeah. I cut that bottom here, and now I go here. Now, what I love about this position is, I don't even need this arm. Yeah, so I can let go with this arm completely. You go as hard as you can to whip skip. Go on, lad. So I don't even need this arm. Which means, what I can do when I get this position, is control his hips with my right arm, I can go like this and just work on getting this arm underneath these, here. Yeah, so keep trying to rip the skin. We've got loads of control all the time, yeah? And I've got that now, so I know now, if he can't get his elbow to the floor, I'm not going to get me back to up. So like everyone teaching basics like Jiu Jitsu to like never go to a scaffold. But it's a fucking good position because everyone says don't go, so people more or less let you get them because they think it's the wrong thing and then it's too late for them to get out when they feel how tight it is. So, the key with me not getting my back took <laughs> is that that elbow doesn't touch the floor. Yeah, if that elbow doesn't touch the floor, he cannot get behind me. So I need to get that arm just under his tricep and to make sure I don't get his elbow to the floor, just grab his shoulder. So now look at how much distance he's got to get that elbow in front of my forearm. Yeah, and I've got time to do that because he can't move because of my tight waist. So I'll go here and I grab his shoulder, and now you try and get your elbow to the floor. He's going to have to whip escape to get that to the floor. Yeah, so then what normally happens from here then is I'll come here and I grab the side of his neck here. So that arm is completely isolated. Now I guarantee you, nine times out of ten, you'll release this tight waist and they'll go balls out to get back in the wrestle. Perfect. So now he's just fucked himself. So now I've, he's gone for the underhook. Now I get the crease of my bicep. I touch it to his neck and I just grab my thigh. That's my first grip. So now you try and get out there, try and take me back. Yeah, I'm not even using this arm. <laughs> exactly, so, which means, all I'm looking for is to get my ribs. This is a compression choke. It's not a blood choke on his throat, so it can be slower. So I get my ribs over his ribs, 
and then because it can be slower the key is I don't want to squeeze again so I'll get my wrist bone and I put it underneath his elbow here and then I'm going to come and grab wrist to wrist grip for already there's pressure now doing that gets his head out of line which means he can't bridge and roll which means I can put all my weight on his chest and then lift and you finish now if for whatever reason he's unbelievably resilient and I'm here and he can't, I can't finish I can just go one two get that here and then just run the legs and get a shoulder off so it's all very simple shit so you go in one body loss here just drag see like this this is fine I'm in this position just grab chop in front of the hips I'm on the tight waist straight away so now from here I just keep my head in front of his chest I can just under up this arm it's perfect here I've under up the arm I've grabbed the neck on the other side and I've got a tight waist now I'll bring this out, he's dying to get out of this position, it feels shit. So he gets an underhook here, which is when I just sit through and lift his head. When I lift his head, I get my bicep to his neck and grab my thigh. Then ask him to move from here, so you move him there. And all you've got to focus on is keeping this foot in line with his chest. Grabbing your own thigh and that elbow can't get to the floor. So now I can go one wrist to wrist. That's tight already. Then I get my weight on his chest, so I've got to go sideways. But he can't hip and bridge because his head's out of line, so you try and hip and bridge. Yeah, now I lift. And I can't finish, so I grab my thigh. I go like this. Don't go like this. Because now if his left hand comes around the back of me, it's around me lower back, around me lower back, and grabs my wrist. You don't want that. So keep this tucked. Now I can push. Tiny, all the small movements. Pull your heel to your bum and just run. The shoulder lock. Yeah? One sided with the competition. I've been residing where the rent is free. I got brothers and I got acquaintances. Why nobody is a friend of me? Fam roots deeper than the evergreen. Clear us and them. Got a separate creed by any means. I'm a step past seated. I'm in a cut with the gang gang. Damn, y'all can't stop the bleeding. The premonitions brought it on the life for me. Four years before I seen it. Stop asking that to let it be, cause it all happens for a reason. Someone at the If I get to that position, we'll move on now. There's just something for you to remember. It's all been videoed, so I'm sure you'll be able to watch back. So when you get here, stay side on. Yeah, if I go like this, it's wrong now. Yeah, there's no pressure on his actual ribs. Your ribs has got to be over his ribs. Yeah? And this is one of them, like, you will get better with this the more you just practice it and the more you go after it yeah because it's one of them where you've got to feel when you're in the right position like I know if I land and I'm like hi here I'm not even gonna try it Door John now I'm here to stay tell me who the fuck gonna face the music more brick laying less screen time been cutting back on the daily usage long road for the road dogs with the weird minds from a soapbox okay now the absolute key with it when you're entering is that this is off the floor so when you start sparring and you're like this and you're sparring, don't get in the habit of going like this and just diving in. Because when that elbow's on the floor, you'll get your back to it. Yeah? So you need to make sure if you're inside and you want to do this, I'll like isolate his arm. So I'll just get my knee underneath his shoulder. Now I can come here and replace that knee with my thigh. So now his elbow is nowhere near the floor. So now I can come one. I can adjust position and come here. Now let's say your body locked me really tight. We won't practice now, but just so you know, if this happens, you can still finish. I get my wrist bone, and I put it underneath the bone of his elbow there. So he thinks he's safe from the compression, he's got a body lock. Get that, and that elbow, that bone on the bottom of his elbow there. Put your wrist bone underneath that, and then pull your right hand to your left hand, and lock an S grip. Does the same thing, side, lift, yeah? So, this time, if you get someone in this position, there's two directions, yeah? If I get sent, sent inside position, I can drag him to me and throw. And there's shit loads you could do for me, like you could do real big Gucci matters that look great, but realistically, you get there, you just need one throw. If he's coming this way, you will take him down with that dragon shot. 
If I go here, I'll always go for that chop and drive. As I go here, I'll sit back sometimes. So now this is where you use your momentum. Yeah, if he sits back, don't fight like mad and try and throw him that way. If he sits back, I can just drop to my lead knee, hook it inside trip and pin that other leg so I'll get to half guard. Now all I want you to do to start with is do a pass from here next and set up a submission. But all I want you to do to start is make sure you're landing in the right position. Because you don't want to take someone down here, not control this arm, he underhooks your leg. Now you're in a deep half guard, he's under your hips. Different game altogether, exactly. So as soon as you land, if I'm ever in the half guard, I've always got my head in front of his chest and controlling the arm on the inside, every single time. Head in front of the chest is massive, because as we said before, for some reason people get to half guard and they go like this. And there's just a the Kimura there all day. Yeah, so you need to protect your arm. Your head's in front of the chest all the time. I'm here, and this arm is controlling his hips. He tries to move away, and just follow him. Follow him. And then he moves from his hips to control the hips. The next drill, you just go in one, just end the start here, poly lock, inside position. Drive, drive, you sit flat, drop to my knee, pinch that chin and step over it. Give him the half guard, control the arm, head in front of the chest, and I've got a tight waist. All the time, tight waist. If you get a body lock, you should finish with a tight waist. Good position. One more time. Body lock, inside position, drag, drag, inside trip, step over, control the inside arm, head in front of his chest with a tight waist grip. Yeah? Two minutes, get all them points and put a patch on to that. I've got BKTs on this bitch, so everybody gonna roll down, yeah. So I'm here, so I drag, drag, he sits back this time. So I go here, and step over that leg, and instantly I control his arm. So it's, every time it's gotta be, have you got a good position first? Yeah, don't work if your position's shit. Yeah, like if you get to mount, and he's got double underhooks, then you need to get yourself an underhook, or he's gonna escape. Yeah, before you attack any submissions, it's the same here. I don't wanna have no control of his arm and let him work. And I'm trying to submit him. Get a good position first and absolutely nullify everything he wants to do from this position and then set your own stuff up. So for me and Al, I'm controlling his arm. I can guarantee a lot of the time I grab this wrist, I pull it in, he gets up on his elbow. It happens all the time, exactly. So for me and Al, when he gets up on that elbow, my tight waist wrist is going to come to his wrist instead. Yeah, and I'm going to pull that under his rib here. Now I'm sure again, I'm a mate, perfect for you to strike. If I want to pass from here now, there's two things that can happen from here. If he keeps his arm behind my head like this, all I'm going to do is post on the bottom leg, go pin it to the floor, clear my knee line. Now when I get here, I'm going to cut the back of his neck. I'm going to step over and look what my right shoulder's done. It's already put his arm behind his back. So I'm just going to hug it, release the wrist, and come to a Kimura instead, <laughs> yeah? So I've landed in this half guard, I've got a tight waist, bring this arm up there. And we're here. I grab his wrist, I pull it in. If he doesn't take the bait, that's fine, yeah? I could literally come here and pass anywhere, I don't need him on his elbow. But I guarantee a lot of the time they don't like, they don't want to be in this position. So you frame here, that's it. So stay tight on this, I can even get a body lock for a minute. From here, if he turns that arm away, so I can't just grab it with this hand. Just go here, bring it in. Now I can. Fold it. Come here, post, just pin that bottom leg. So it's not following me. I clear my knee line. I grab this head, step over and look at my right shoulder. It's not doing anything, it's just through the position it's in, it puts his hand behind his back. He can't defend with this arm. So I just hug his arm. Well, as soon as I release the, release the grip on his bottom wrist, 
I grab his top wrist and I get my elbow behind his back. Now ideally I want to be sitting down and then I've got all that way to extend when you come over. Okay. Now from there as well, if I went like this, and this came in front, that's great. Yeah, I can put my left leg on the thigh, leg pin, step over, I can take it back. So both reactions you've got something. Yeah. Just do the same takedown. Get him to the half guard. Here, he gets up on his elbow, grab, pull, handcuff. If this is in front here, bring this leg, leg pin his bottom thigh, come through, step over, tap the back. If it stays behind you, set up the Kimura by stepping over his head. Once someone's out behind the back, like literally I can sit down here and walk it on. Oh, yeah, Even yeah. if he exploded and put me on the back. Yeah. Don't matter. Yeah. Look, tell me what's the vibes, what's the mood. So this is just a little trick if like you don't get up on the elbow. So say I've tucked him down, I've gone here, drag, drag, inside trip. We go here. Let's say he doesn't tap the bait again, his elbow. It's fine. I'm gonna keep my head under his chin. The post on his bottom leg and I just need to clear my knee, here. Now let's say now from here I can literally go double under up. It's a great position for me. Now let's say he really clamps tight onto my foot. Cross your legs around my foot, that's it. So I'm in like a quarter guard type thing. And you're struggling to get this free. This creates loads of pressure now. So I love bringing my head to the side that my leg's trapped on. So bring my head to this side. I look away from him. And with the back of my head, I try and pick his head up off the floor. Yeah. Now, that becomes very easy. And then you can pass. Now I've got double under up, so I can go one, mount. Or, I can set the bait, he goes for his under hook. And you're back into what we did before. Yeah, so just a little trick. If you're ever stuck in a quarter guard and you're like trying to boot it off, you're sliding it back trying to boot it off, just use your head instead. Yeah, that's why your head's so important. So my head is on his side, like this. He doesn't take the bait. So just use your head under his chin, pin his bottom leg to the mat. You're always going to be able to clear that. But he's got a nice bite on your foot now. So you might not be able to get that free. So being in a body lock always gets you under ups as well, which is perfect. Which means every time you go to mount, you're in an optimal position as well. But I have under ups here. Keep his spine flat to the floor, and then I bring his head, my head to this side, and I look away to the back of my head and trying to pick his head up. Here, it's almost a submission. It's that side, and then I can kick. I can come through. And you can, now I'm in a good position. Yeah. Right, last take down. So if he has inside position, you know you need to know what to do. I'm sure you've seen people get here and they get thrown this way. They can reach him after or a high. That's because your direction's wrong. Like, if I get a body lock and I go like this, 100% he's going to grab my tricep and then just stick your left leg in there. Throw me that way. Yeah, of course he is. But, if I go like this, try and do the same for him, right? That's what I <laughs> Literally, it's that simple. Yeah. It's just purely direction. So if you get a body lock and someone has a wizard, always go as if you're trying to get behind them. Yeah, and you will not get thrown. If I go like this, now I get thrown. Yeah, if I go like this, complete wrong direction, you won't even tap. And then what that sets up as well is a tight waist again. Under up this leg, put my knee down. Easy take now. Now I can grab the trap, I can bring my left knee behind his black, shrug the arm in front, and I've got a nice crank here. Yeah, easy. Again, I get to the body lock, I get to wizard, he has inside position, so as soon as that happens, I go like this. No big throw here anymore. Now I'll just go here, now I've killed everything. Now when I lift this, the leg in the middle, I just drop to my knee, 
put them on his side here. Now from here, I grab the trap, I put my knee behind his back, my other knee comes behind his shoulder. That arm's going to pop in front. I lock a gable grip here. So the arm under his head is palm down. I go palm to palm, so my wrist bone is clamping into his neck. Now I need to get my left elbow and pull it over his rib. And I'll bring his back flat so his head's on my shoulder. Now I'll take my knees off the floor, push with my shoulder and pull with my hands. Tight. If I turn him back this way, I can't get the finish. I can go here. Go straight to me, cutting me back to it. Straight to me arm bar. It all links together. Here. Last time. So I'm going, I might have gone here. One, two, he gets the wizard, he's got inside position, so we'll go like this. Lift. Oh. Here. Circle. Palm down. Other palm under, wrist bones touching his neck. Pull the elbow over, bring him flat. His head's resting on your shoulder. Here you go. Can even sit him up, pull it through. Now it's a strangle instead. <coughs> yeah. So we go. Yeah, I just hit a mic key for the juice. Yeah, ain't no captain, I'ma tell the truth. I've been winning for so long, it's hard to lose. Deal, be my source. Uh, Christian, like the York. Yeah, I can't stop when I'm far. Just get back up. Yeah, I've been quiet all along on my TP toes. Yeah, I can't keep it to myself. I just give and go. I'm a visionist. Yeah, you can't picture this. Yeah, ain't no way you can outwork me, boy. I live for this. Sippin' essential, that's the essential, stop influential Yeah, so fundamental, that's fundamental, on instrumentals Yeah, speed of the tempo, yeah, we got potential Shoot a movie like I'm Denzel, running my ride to the end zone And he's looking to find me, man you know where to find me So, that's your technique sir, so What I've tried to do with that is give you like Almost like a full game In two hours So keeping it as simple as possible, so like if you're going to get to a body lock, you're either going to be behind them with a body lock or they're going to stop you getting behind them with a body lock so they have a whizzer. When they have a whizzer, you're going to have the leg in the middle or they're going to have the leg in the middle. So now you've got an option for every one of them. And like genuinely, you don't need more than one option in each direction. Like there is loads of takedowns you could do, but you just don't need them. It's like if you get, to, if you get behind them, and you can drag him to turtle, that's, that's all you need. If I'm trying to drag him to turtle and he's sitting back, then I could just sweep his foot, literally as simple as that, and just take him where he's already going. If you have your leg in the middle, I can literally just chop and drive. If he sits back, I've got an inside trip. If he has inside leg position, then there's only one direction you should be moving, which is behind it, which just sets, that, sets up that under up takedown every single time. And on the floor, what we tried to do there is like, Every takedown that you do, you just land in the same position. So you haven't, if you play that game, you haven't actually got that much to be good at. If you spot someone's on their elbow, just take the wrist away. If you spot a leg free, just tie it up. Encourage them to show the back so you can take it. If they recognise that you're trying to get to the back, they will go fucking mental to stop you getting to the back, which means they'll turn into you and just give you side and mount. So I guarantee if you're on feet, just go to connect your hands. And then on the floor, just go to get to get behind them, you'll get 10 times more success out of that game. And it's just super simple. Yeah, everyone should be able to do it. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks for I'm trying to give me a Grammy so I can dedicate it to my granny.